have just heard that Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng will bring forward his medium-term fiscal plan to October the 31st in the wake of market turmoil. And yesterday, Cabinet Office Minister Nadim Zahawi sought to reassure the public that winter blackouts were, quote, extremely unlikely, but that it was important that the government plans for every scenario. Well, this all follows the national grid saying consumers could face power outages to ensure that the grid does not collapse in the unlikely event gas supplies fall short of demand. Well, let's speak to Malcolm Grimston, who's Senior Research Fellow at the Centre for Energy Policy and Technology at Imperial College. Always good to speak to you, Malcolm. Um, let's firstly start off with what Nadim Zahawi said yesterday. He was seeking to reassure uh, the public that, that blackouts would be unlikely Although he said the government have to plan for every scenario, is he right that they are very unlikely? Yes, uh, that's right. I mean, every year the National Grid uh, does these exercises. It looks at possible uh, things that could lead to power cuts and how those power cuts would be managed. So there's nothing particular about that. I think it is fair to say that we are closer to um, major blackouts this year than we have been for some considerable time. And how could we be otherwise? We've had massive disruption to Europe's gas supplies. We've had a very dry spell, which has meant that hydropower across Europe isn't uh, very available. We've had a spell with relatively little wind. And we've had the uh, world coming out of the post-COVID recession using more energy. So it's quite right that we look at these possibilities. But it still remains far more likely than not that we'll be OK this winter. Mm. And it is part of the country being OK. Does that partly depend on people using their energy uh, more spa sparsely, more sparingly, or whatever the word I'm looking for is? Because the government have said they won't be going ahead with this campaign, a £14 million campaign, to give the public information on how to save energy. Um, what did you make of that? I think it was unfortunate, it's certainly the case with the prices that we're having to pay of energy now. But I think all of us are taking use of energy far more seriously. I certainly uh, am. And we're looking at ways to reduce our bills at home. But there are certain things that I think it would be helpful for government to be telling people about. Ironically, one of them is this very misleading statement that energy bills will be capped at £2,500. They won't. That's the average price that a household will pay based on the cap. But of course, many households will be paying a lot more than that. And we kind of need a bit of public information to get over mm -hmm. the misinformation that the government has accidentally put out over this. But there's lots of other things. I think it would be helpful just to have a list of people saying these are the things that use a lot of energy in the home. And these are the things that don't use quite so much. So the kettle, the washing machine, uh, they do use a lot of energy, the television, the radio, not so much. So if you're planning your day, if you can plan the day round doing low energy activities when demand is generally high, which is during the daytime and the early evening, and then do low energy activities overnight when there's much less demand for electricity, all those sorts of things seem to me to be very sensible. And given the sums we're talking about, £40 million, it really is a drop in the ocean when the government is talking about £40 billion in the next six months to help mm -hmm. us with our energy bills. So I personally think that's an unfortunate decision and, and I hope the government will rethink it. Mm. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more there. The amount of times uh, I I've heard people say energy bills are capped at 2500 and I'm just thinking, no, they're absolutely not capped uh, at that. That's just the average uh, price the average household can expect to pay on average. So uh, I couldn't agree with you more there. Uh, and what about how much of this is still dependent on where we go with the um, Russia, Russian invasion of Ukraine, because of, there are news stories coming out every single day that Russia is still very much on the attack. And we have now implemented across Europe lots of sanctions on Russian energy. Do, do, does the fact this is still going on worry you slightly in terms of where this could lead for British energy security? Of course it does. I mean, this is the well, we should remember that the energy crisis was brewing before the Russian invasion. I was uh, chatting to you and your colleagues uh, some yeah, for several weeks before that uh, invasion. 
because there were already many factors that were pushing energy prices up, not particularly to the extent of us being afraid of security of supply, I think. But of course, the big extra player that, that is the Russian invasion and what we're seeing in terms of damage to the pipelines from Russia into Germany, carrying gas, for example, um, this is extremely worrying. And it does emphasize that energy is a very volatile business. You can get massive changes happening in very short periods of time, as we've seen over the last year or two. But to put those things right takes a very long period of time. It takes a lot of investment to produce a new gas rig, as we're looking at at the moment, or a new nuclear power station, uh, or a new tidal barrier, or whatever, or to uh, strengthen the grid so it can take uh, offshore wind, let's say. So we do need to uh, recognize that there is, there's a long-term issue here as well as the short-term one. Yeah. And I don't know if you heard there just before the break, we were speaking, uh, getting the breaking news that Chancellor Kwesi Kwarteng will be bringing forward his medium term fiscal plan to October the 31st. So just uh, three more weeks or so to wait for that. Uh, what would you like to hear from his fiscal plan? Well, I think we've already got the bones of it there, which is uh, major uh, increased investment in nuclear power, looking again at North Sea uh, gas to make us a bit less dependent on imported gas. Oh Clearly, the wind doesn't blow all the time and we need to use gas to, to fill in those uh, gaps. Uh, and I think we'll also see uh, a, a clarification as to, the, as to the short term help for people who are having huge problems with their energy bills. So I think we've already got a reasonable shape of what the Chancellor is likely to uh, do and it's you know, it's an enormous challenge for for this government. It's in a sense been extremely unlucky to uh, the, the new chancellor has inherited a very very difficult situation, uh, and he will need to be working with colleagues in trade and industry departments and other departments to see how we can get this twin problem of getting through the next perhaps year or two. Energy prices will come down. In fact, the gas price has come down quite noticeably over recent weeks. Although we need to see what effect. Uh, the, the latest developments have, uh, and petrol prices at the pump, we've all seen yeah. have come down quite away from their peak. So there is some sort of good news there, but we can't continue making this mistake of a short-term crisis, a short-term solution, and not looking at the long-term to prevent the next crisis happening. And that's what I hope we will see from the Chancellor's statement. 